All right, up up next we got Hugo. So Hugo has got a character head steady, uh, textures and materials section, and then a shrine. So we'll go ahead and start with the head steady. So this is already, like, I am terrible at characters, but this is already far better than what I would do. This looks like, um, yeah, ZBrush and Maya. This looks like maybe texture projection within ZBrush with poly paint. Um, yeah, I guess the only things I would say is like making sure to understand like um, bone structure, like where muscles go, where where skin tension occurs, proportions, and uh, like how the skin rests on the face. Like this, this is probably a doozy to work on. Like this looks for me, this looks stressful. <laughs> the the wrinkles look stressful. Uh, he looks like he's stressed. <laughs> or he's had a life of stress. Um, so I can't really comment too much on these, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is two months ago as well, huh? Some heads that I've done for a project trying to achieve a realistic style, PB, uh, BPR. Oh, nice, BPR, yes. Um, BPR is a type of rendering inside a ZBrush. So I think uh, initial reaction is that uh, you need to work on your hair uh, and like how the hair blends into the skin as well as working on the uh, the way that the skin reacts to uh, the light getting that subsurface I think you there's a there's like a clay uh, like a wax option that was added into ZBrush a few years ago that's a pretty easy way to start getting light passing through the skin pretty naturally it's like faking that that subsurface you can tone it down quite a bit and get the light just kind of passing through the skin. So I'd look at doing that. Um, for your materials, your textures and materials for the shrine, this looks uh, this looks pretty good. Let's see here, dude. It's so crazy when you see it like when you see it like this, and then you see it flat, and how straight these are is always jarring to me. Whoops, hang on. So. Obviously, the line being so straight in the height map, you can see it's it's white and then black. Um, let me just do this. So, like, if we zoom in here, so when you have white and black in your in your height map. It's basically like this is a this is a side view of it, right? What's going on here? I don't want any smoothing. Sure. Okay, so this is the top of the brick, and then it goes down to zero. So this would be this range right here would be one in the height map range, and then the black would be zero. So let's say that this is one, and then down here is zero. Now because it is so harsh in the transition. Uh, when you perceive it from like this angle and like it's being displaced because there's that little, there's like one pixel of information that has to be stretched. Uh, that, that edge only has one pixel of information to stretch. That's why you're getting, um, that's why you're getting this stuff here. That's one pixel of information being stretched back in space. So when it comes to trying to alleviate that, that pain, <laughs> that pain and suffering, uh, let's, uh, let's look at how you achieve that. So best case scenario is, where is that line? I was drawing, there it is. Um, so it goes like that and then maybe it goes like this. It doesn't even have that room, I don't think. No, it's got like one pixel of room, so it's just doing that. So, if you need more room for the stretching, uh, to alleviate the stretching, basically you need to do what, what you're seeing here, right? See how there's this edge, and then it like slowly works its way up to this edge? All of this here 
is very you're seeing it here it's a gradient you can see it right here as well wherever this is happening you're not getting the stretch so if that gradient that's occurring here can get to the zero range before it drops off you're basically going to get rid of the stretching the other thing you can do of course is if you just like taper it off a little bit See now, now instead of a single like one pixel, what is that? One pixel. You've got like that many pixels of information to uh, stretch, which is far like this quickly becomes enough to alleviate the the stretching. Um. Oh man, you got a bunch of stuff in here. This moss seems to be is missing a lot of its depth. I think that's just because the ambient occlusion of moss is really strange. I got you. There you go. Um, yeah. This one's pretty simple. Dry ground. So ground, like this needs like little rocks, right? It's got these little, maybe these little pebbles and stuff. But it needs like sticks and twigs and like dry ground is never just dirt, right? There's a bunch of stuff. Like if you look at it really closely, even if it's freshly dug up by a truck and then dumped, look at it closely and just look at all the little small details that are in there. There's going to be all types of weird stuff. See, I think where you're, where you're missing a lot of your information right now is mostly in your... Um, in your albedo. Oh, this one's interesting, rock surface. So, see there's a lot of information here, but in this one there's almost none. Mud's gonna have all types of weird stuff in it, right? The smoothness of it is gonna be depicted by the normal map and the roughness. But um, yeah, I mean, dude, this one's cool. So I think you're, it looks like you're getting it and it's just a matter of time. Like just keep focusing on trying to alleviate the things that make it look like it's being, um, like the problems, the small problems, like the stretching, um, the kind of like the way these cracks look like they're just a, a noise pattern that's being applied to apply cracks versus like natural formation of cracks and like trying to f get that look through the ways you're distorting these edges is going to be is going to be important and then making sure that the this chipping doesn't look like the uh the kind of over exaggerated chipping that you see when you when you push the um when you push that uh, what's that node called what's the node called where you're um min max and Slope blur, thank you. Thank you, Tish. My hell. Your hell? <laughs> yeah, this uh, this is a common mistake by uh, people early on in Substance Designer is just pushing that slope blur, 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 pushing the slope blur too far, and you just get this pretty even uh, amount of chipping in and chipping out with the micro chipping as well. is all very uniform. It, it causes that look that... Uh, can be sometimes be called very procedural looking. Procedural looking is not really the best way to describe the issue. It's the easy way to describe it, but it's not really what's happening. It's 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 like when you're modeling and you're blocking out something, or you you don't know how to take an asset further than uh, what. Like you model something and it just does not look like the object but you've taken it as far as you can. But there's all types of stuff you can do, like beveling and detailing and lots of uh, tricks that you learn over, over time. This will go away. You just have to make sure to uh, dial things in and get them to look as natural as possible. Like instead of being like, how much slope blur do I need to be doing? Ask yourself, how chipped is it in the reference and how do I get that look? And it will be a combination of slope blur and some other notes, right? Reference is key. 
let's see here. Oh, right. And then we got a scene. Nice and big for you guys. Got to build it up gradually. Yeah, start big. Work on the smaller details as as you get the big details done. Dang, that is sick already. This is really cool. So see how much detail there is? There's a lot of stuff going on. Area of rest, for better or worse, is a central area. Um, man, there's some cool stuff going on in here. I feel like this the leaves here are a little flat. This could really use a detail normal to kind of break up the surface and uh, maintain the scale. Oh, this is cool. Uh, the other thing is I feel like you're missing a lot of the details that occur uh, in the leaves here. Whether it be like a little like darker line right in the middle of it or some type of color uh, breakup. It's very one color right now. So compositionally, you'll want to figure out like how to make this hallway look interesting. And then like, as you can see here, I'll just screenshot this real quick. Um, this is a compositional comment. So let's do, I'm trying to think of a color that is positive, but also easy to see. Yeah, cool. Um, so you've got those pieces, those pass by first, right? Then you have, oops, then you have this shot, right? And you can see the details are a little bit more, it's a little bit more detailed. There's some stuff happening in the silhouette here, but thinking about like how to uh, break it up so that it has more uh, silhouette interest is is key and like even if you can going outside of it because see doing that gets you away from that square shape that you're getting as you go through the hall um and then all those details can be like echoed along the wall right because they're just extrusions maybe like up, up this way so then immediately you get all these details which allows you to do things like have vines going down this and like Maybe there's some little plants and stuff down here. I need to use a different color. Maybe there's little plants and stuff down here that are like in the little cracks. A um, few vines hanging down. Just anything to break up from that just square shape, right? And then the, the next thing you're gonna wanna look at is the next layer forward, which is this tree, which is doing this right now. That's like a dragon. Um, this part here is kind of like cutting into it and so is this. I think if you want the tree to be there, it would be something like, like that. So that way you still have something like you're coming through the, the shape of the hallway passes by you. And then the, the shape of the tree passes by you while not blocking the shot at all. Right. If you want to like have some comparison of like a, or like a contrasting shape as well, having a little bit of grass down here, we need to do darker color, a little bit of stuff here. Maybe a, a few leaves breaking the corner's edge there. And then you have this up here, right? We'll just, we'll just fill this all in Oops. so you get a sense of the, the shape. That's like a huge difference. Obviously, because I just painted over and it looks like crap now. <laughs> but... Hopefully that gives you some, some stuff to work with. Um, this scene is really big. Compositionally, this is pretty interesting. Uh, the leaves, your foliage is really light. I'm not sure why. Everything is pretty light though, so maybe it's just a balance of the, Man, those trees are moving really nicely. They just need maybe a little bit more geometry. You are using speed trees, so I think... Uh, don't skimp on geometry if you think it, things are getting too high poly. Just go for it. The sand at the front, like Tish was saying, is a little bit flat. Um, I think given this lighting scenario and kind of the details that we're seeing, it's probably just being blown out. But definitely look at adding some more like color and shape in your value to kind of like break up the, the value range. Like this is this is really cool. Man, this stuff is sick. Yeah, see, these are really flat. And, like, I know 
It's because they are flat, right? Adding other elements in front of them and pieces that kind of like scoop over the top of them is just going to fake, like even if you're doing another set of those behind it and offset, that's already gonna add more volume. And then like this hard edge here, like totally just push some grass into those, into that little space. Oh, this is cool too. Dude, those snakes. Oh, so cool. These look really suspect for destruction. Like, you just want to be in a uncharted cover here. Guys, bad guys up there. You shoot these pillars out. Things just crushes everyone. And no one even thinks a second about how dope that statue was. It just got crushed. They're just like, sick. I'm rewinding it. Because that tree is floating. That's the stuff I look at all the time. Is like, is it grounded? Is it grounded? Just take that tree, push it, push it into the ground just a little bit. The other thing is your your grass is really sparse. So like getting getting more grass around to try and like blend everything together is gonna be important. And yeah, again, your foliage is very like uh, light in value. Overall though, it's looking pretty yeah, see that sand is very it's very flat. This looks a little low poly as well. Yeah, don't be afraid to add information. Like this upper area here is looking pretty that's looking pretty solid. And I really like the negative space in here. This looks like it could be really interesting is like breaking up the the lily pads so that they're only in like a few areas cluster together is going to make them more impactful, I think. Um, and if you're gonna do a shot like this, I gotta see fish, man. I don't know why. I gotta see something under the water, you know? This looks cool. There's a hard edge here, so maybe like either plants growing here or maybe some stones, little bricks or rocks or something would be, would be good. This is awesome. Oh, wow, what the hell? Very good, very good. Oh, that's cool too. See, this looks like you were looking at some reference because I wouldn't even begin to know how to make that one up. Oh yeah, this is cool. Oh, nice damage too. Good layering of the rock. This one's still a little on the geometric side, but uh, it's, it's, it's getting there. Man, this kind of reminds me of Uncharted's wires. Oh, nice. So that's really interesting. There's way more information going on there than what I was seeing in your scene, and I'm not sure why. Huh. Your sun might, your direct light might be too bright. Anywho, dope portfolio. Uh, I think you're on the road. You're heading in the right direction. These details are are pretty ace. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just keep keep pushing. Think about the stuff we talked about, um, and uh, continue to be active and sharing in the Discord with your your work. And people will definitely say the things that need to be said. People in critiques are pretty freaking good, man. It scares me. Got people critiquing better than me. I'm like, oh, feels bad, man. But it's exciting. It's really exciting. Anyways, nice work. Uh, and I look forward to seeing more from you. Oh, yeah, see, that looks really good. So you take this, and then it's on this ground. They're very separated. Like, these two need to feel like they're in the same scene. Anywho, one more portfolio. One more. I promise. I'll be right back.